It was winter time, and I wanted to go exploring. I decided to go to Canada. The original plan I had was to go to Vancouver Island, however, I did not know this bridge here was going to close up for boat crossings, and it was eating into my time to be able to make it to the ferry. It certainly wasn't helping how slow these guys were going. Like really slow. Luckily I did think about the plan B just in case this might have happened. The plan was to go to Bellingham that evening. One small thing though about going to Bellingham from here, it's across the Puget Sound, so my next best option was to go to Port Townsend. From here I'll be taking the Coopville Ferry to get back over to the east end of the Puget Sound where I get onto Whidbey Island and eventually onto I-5. There are five different areas up and down the Puget Sound on both ends where one can get on a ferry. Tourists that come into Washington, being on a ferry boat can feel like a vacation experience all on its own. It's truly unique as you taxi across the water. The spot at which you cross from Whidbey Island onto the mainland is known as Deception Pass. The main attraction in this place is a bridge built in 1935, which spans across the entire pass and has a 180 foot drop. I got over to Bellingham within the evening time. I went to a few bars with my friend I stayed with. Maybe one too many, as by morning time I had a headache and was bargaining with a few seagulls if they wanted some of my breakfast. Heading over the border was pretty straightforward. I recommend taking Highway 15 over to TransCanada Highway 1 in order to get past Vancouver and avoid all traffic. In the valleys was some dense fog, but eventually once I got to my destination, I came to this. This is the small town of Squamish. A small town that is simply surrounded by mountains and bigger mountains. This is more of a tourist town and also a stopping point for those going toward Whistler. I was staying here, a really nice hostel location. Hostels are kind of like hotels, except you share the same room with four to six other people in bunks, allowing for costs to be a lot lower than your average hotel. This place in particular is $33 Canadian at the time. So this is a hostel that I, uh, I'm at. It's pretty cool. It's actually pretty adventure focused. Where uh, the options that are available, they have a little board downstairs showing all the outdoor activities that are around here. But actually. And there's rock climbing. You can even see people climbing right over there. Pretty awesome. Okay, this is pretty interesting. This is awesome. Okay, it's just a mirror with a touch button that activates the light around the mirror, but come on, it's pretty cool. Now it's time to get some drone footage while the light is still out. Time for the main event, a hike known as The Chief. We're going up there. Heading back south about three miles, you'll find a parking lot just above the highway. All right, people call this The Chief. I can hike to the top. I was gonna bring my drone, but uh, it might be a bit windy up there and it'd save a bit of weight. There's going to be a couple of spots where there's a ladder we got to traverse and some chain that we got to grab onto to get up this thing. Oh, this is going to be a cool hike. The Chief. 
over there. I mean, over that bluff. I got started around 10 in the morning. This is also a trailhead for several other hikes. Even a gondola you could walk to and take to the neighboring mountain. Beyond that, the difficulty of this hike is above what I was even imagining. The hike that I'm doing actually has three different options. Most people are content with going just to the first peak, but there's also peak two and peak three. Cannot be stressed enough is just how steep this hike is. In the course of just two to two and a half miles, you're going up 2,300 feet. At least if you're going to the location that I'm going, which is peak number two. Stairs. That was quite a bit of work. Now to keep going. God dang it, more stairs. Okay, I think I'm going to take a small break. Let's take a look, see what's over here. Very nice. skip to about the 10 minute mark. But it's kind of interesting to see all the forests and textures of the rock that I'm passing by. Holding this camera at a pretty steep angle. <laughs> yeah, if you do this high, pretty good chance this is going to be a pretty solid leg day. This is the point where you can take a right and go to the neighboring mountain where a gondola comes up to. Panoramic. I had better interest though. I didn't want this chief to beat my legs. Gosh darn it. More extremely steep stairs. There's a good viewpoint for a water break. I wonder how many people have tried pushing on that just for a sake of curiosity to see if it would budge. Last time I started getting back uphill. I gotta say though, I cannot get enough of the textures of these rocks that are showing up. It's really interesting. At some point I see a split in the trail. Be sure to take a ride if you're going for peak number two, or if you want to go just for the first peak, you can take a left right there.
this is where things are about to get interesting. A little tip for those that are a little more experienced clambering around rocks. This is kind of a secret back way from peak number one straight on to the beginning of peak number two if you want. Right here they've got bars made into the rock. As you can see, that hillside is not for everybody. After getting to the top here, it's time to keep going forward. One thing to keep in mind though, is it's going to go downhill. You think you're going the wrong way. Just keep going along this little path here. Go up left, this is where you end up. Don't go up left. physically fit is strongly recommended. The end point is right here, after going between a small crevice. That would be peak number one for you. The guys over there were actually flying a drone. Too bad I didn't bring mine. Maybe if I had a hiking partner, pretty sure I could have had it up there. Would have been a lot of fun to get a view from that. All the same, the view you get from this point is pretty dang good. There's still a little more climbing to do. A rock face above me I was trying to get to, which is where peak number two is located. Any experienced hiker can get here within a couple hours. Me and my camera gear, which was about 20 to 30 pounds of it, it took me about three and a half. The way back down is going to be shown in photos, as I had had enough carrying the cinema camera. You could skip forward to about 14 minutes, although you might be missing out a little bit. Yeah, at this point my legs were feeling pretty overwhelmed, and it was a welcome sight to get back to the trailhead. Still though, this place has left a pretty good impression on me. You know what? I'm loving this place. It's pretty awesome. I mean, you get all these hiking options over there, or even that way, everywhere. It's a small town here, and then this place here is freaking awesome. If you're looking for somewhere cheese cheap I mean it, it works it's a peaceful little town I and mean, if it was possible I'd maybe move here someday I like this place a lot well it was time I headed back home but the fun wasn't even done yet as morning would turn into evening I'd get greeted by a pretty awesome sunset I was taking the same ferry ride back home Thank you. 
Thanks for watching. If you liked this episode and want to keep up with the latest adventures I go on, click subscribe. And don't forget, hit that bell icon, that way you get notified. Thank you.